sail forward, smashing through the glass in a sudden silence. Fri friend, frenzy, the one thing it could do was roar. It, uh, it had no lungs, but it fe it fe its feet bones without fre flesh made a bizarre sound as they cl cl clanked against the mosaic floor. It was changing up its mouth ga gaping its black teeth, snapping at the air, its tail tr trashed, it scattering the fragments of what had once been its own. The protectical divided for a fifth time, its pointed beak aimed at Matt's head. With a cry, he threw himself onto the floor, then rolled over and over again, avoiding the crocodile. The creature had, at that had accreted towards him, its jaws snapping. How could it even see Matt? Wonder, wondered with, with eye sockets that were completely empty. But it, but it didn't hesitate. It turned round and come at him again. Matt was on his way back in search. In in seconds, the creature would be on top of him. Then Richard act. He had grabbed a chair and holding it like a baseball baseball bat. But baseball bat, he swung it. The crocodile, using all his strength. The heavy wood and impulsively slammed into the creature, knocking it off, knocking it off course, and causing one side of its rib cage to collapse. It lay on the ground, twitching and rattling, still trying to get back on its feet. Its mouth mouth opened and snapped shut. Its its ad thrust from side to side. Move, Richard shouted, a second showcase below itself, a glass crashed down. One by one, the dinosaur skeletons were coming to life. Bone rattled against marble. Matt got to his feet wondering, Matt got to his feet wondering how many exhibits there were in the museum and What about the one they had seen when they come in, come in the dialogue? Because even as Matt turned towards the huge grits, he saw the bones and began to tremble. And now that it too was coming to life, the Diplodocus was 20 metres long. Its dreadful tail was calling and uncurling coiling and uncoiling and emitted by whatever energy was flowing through it. One of the legs moved each of the joints, shuddering its head, swirling around, searching for its prey. The door, Richard, yelled then cried out as something crashed into him. It was a giant lizard skeleton walking on its two hind legs, its arms outstretched, it was made up of at least a hundred bones, suspended from a long curving spine, with vicious teeth guttering forward, snapping at his throat, Richard fell backwards, his arm furling, Matt saw the key, keys leave his hands, and arc into the darkness, the lizard leapt into the air. Richard arrayed himself sideways. The lizard crushed down. If he had waited one more second, it would have landed on top of him. The door, he screamed the words again, See you can find a way out. The mist was getting thicker and Matt could no longer see 
from one end of the hall to the other. There are well, fewer explosions, one after the other, as more exhibit cases were destroyed from within the half visible stripes appeared, flying, struttling, or crawling towards them. Richard was searching blindly for the keys, but perhaps the doors would open another way, surely. There must be a fire exit or some way out in case of emergencies. Mark Ron, the fur full length. Matt ran the full length of the hall and reached the front door, sliding to hilt. He grabbed the handle and pulled the door. Was not, not was locked fra fractically. He tried a second door that was locked. To looking out through the glass, he could see officers and flats across the main road. The traffic was moving as usual. Ordinary life but it could have been thousand miles away. Both sets of doors had been locked for the evening. There, there was a murder to leave. They were trapped, Richard Matt called out. There, there was no sign of the journalist. Stay quiet, Richard, voice. Come out of the mist. They can't see you. Stay where you are. Don't make a sound. Was it true? Another thing, perhaps, and an ignoring them was stumbling towards him, towering over him. Matt froze, the dinosaur skeleton had stopped right in front of him. He could see through its eye sockets all the way into its skull. Its mouth was open, revealing ugly white triangular teeth. Each one come to a vicious point. It was it wasn't breathing. It couldn't, but even so, Matt could smell its breath. It stank of sewage and decay. In the far distance, he had the rattling of feet, the rattling of bones. Richard was silent. The dinosaur came, crane forward to seem to be scenting him or perhaps sensing the pulse in its neck now it was only centimeters away Matt wanted to run he, to ski to, ski, to scream he, he was certain the creature was about to attack was he just going to stand where, where while it ripped out his throat Matt, where are you? Matt, where are you? Are you all right? Richard's voice echoed from the other side of all, and the lizard creature twisted away and lumbered off into the dis direction. So Richard had been right with right. The dinosaur were blind. They needed sound and movement to find their victims. I'm okay, Matt shouted back. He didn't dare add more. Can you get can you get out? No, I needed the keys. The keys were laying on the floor beside the stairs Richard picked through the mist and finally saw them and longed for them at the same time a squirt solid looking creature chains towards him. A single arm Pro uh, producing from its misshaped skull. Somewhere in the back of his mind, Richard remembered the creature's name. It was a pterodactyl. Fortunately, it was slower than the others. 
it was moving clumsily, slipping on the marble floor. It could start stretch, snatched up the keys before it could reach him. Overheard our second paradactyl had, had joined the first. The two of them were performing a ghostly dance, wheeling over another, wheeling over another eye in the sky. Matt was still.